guys? Today we are going to create a social network using Flask and Python. By the end of this video, you will know how to create a full stack social network, including a database, server, and your front end. And yeah, so let's get right to it. Thanks for watching. So first thing that you want to do is create your directory for your project. So we're gonna call the directory net. So let's go ahead and create that now. We're gonna say open up a terminal or command prompt and say mkdir net, okay? Then we wanna go ahead and change into that net and it's gonna be an empty folder at this point. Now what we wanna do is say pip install so assuming you have Python installed on your computer, you're going to have pip, which is the Python package manager. We're gonna say pip install virtual env. Okay, so virtual env is a package that will allow us to create an environment where we can keep the specific versions of the Python packages that we are using for this project separate from our from the Python that is installed on our computer, okay? We are doing this so we can keep track of those packages, and then if anyone wants to reproduce our project, they know exactly what packages they need to install. So once we have virtual env installed on our computer, we're gonna say source, um, oh no, actually we are gonna say virtual env, um, and then we wanna say the name of the Python version that we're gonna use. So we're gonna say dash dash Python equals Python 3.6, and then we want to uh, specify the name of our directory. So we're going to say my env. Okay, so now that's going to create that virtual environment for us. Again, this is where all our Python packages that we install are going to be saved to once we activate that. So the way we do that, again, we're still in the same directory. We say source my vnv bin activate. Oh, one sec, guys. Oh, my ENV, there we go. Bin and activate. Okay, so now we are inside of our virtual environment. Now we can install our packages. So we are going to need uh, one package in particular for this, which is Flask. So Flask is a, uh, is a Python web framework that makes it very easy to get a website up and running quickly. It allows us to create a basic server as well as render HTML to the page when our user comes to visit it, okay? So let's go ahead here and say pip install Flask. So after our virtual environment has been activated, that is going to take that package and bring it into our virtual environment for us to use. So now let's go ahead here and um, now we want to create our database schema. Okay, so now we're going to dive into, we have our, our dev environment set up. We're going to dive into how to create the application itself. So the first step in doing this is creating the database schema. So in our case, we are only going to have one table, okay? And a table in a database is where you store all information, okay? Generally, you may have multiple tables. In our case, we're just going to have one, which is posts. So let's go ahead and create a file, and we're going to call it schema dot sql okay so this is where we are going to create the um, or specify the values that are going to be in our database table okay so we're going to say um, in this case here let's go ahead let me open it up here um, okay so we're going to say drop table if exists uh, posts all right and then we want to say create table posts. So what this is doing is this is saying if that table exists already in the database, go ahead and drop it and then create a new one with the things that we are going to specify in just a minute here. Now, these things we're going to specify are unique values in our database. So first thing we want to do is create a unique identifier for every post. So we want to say ID, which is going to be the name of our of our column in our database table where that value is going to go. So every database table has columns that make up the values that relate to those entries into the database, okay? So we wanna say ID integer, and that is going to be the primary key and that is going to auto increment. So this is a little bit of lingo here, guys. This is just SQL uh, syntax for creating a primary key that auto increments. So what that means is this is the, the integer that is going to represent or reference the uh, each individual post. And as each post is added into our database, you can think of it as you define the column values, and then each post you add is a new row in your table that is going to be a new entry into your database that corresponds 
corresponds with those column values at the top. So we have ID integer is a primary key and that's going to auto increment. So that means for each new entry into our database that is going to increase by one. So now we want to create a name. So we're going to say name is going to be text. That means it's a text value and it's going to be not null. So this is going to be for our entry. So now we're thinking for each post that comes into our social network, we want to be able to create uh, this. We want to be able to post an entry into our database, right? And in this case, we want to know the name of the person that created it, and we want it to have the content of the post. And that's what's going to be put into our database. So that is the first value. Name is text, not null. Next up here, we want to grab the content. So we're going to say content text not null so what not null is doing is that's saying if they uh if we try to create an entry and that is a content or name is not specified return an error because we want name and content to be specified for every single entry in our database okay so now that we've got that let's go ahead and just add our closing parenthesis closing semicolon and write and quit this all right, so now we have our schema. Now we're gonna use our schema.sql in order to generate our database file. So let's go ahead here and use SQLite 3. This is a very light version of a database you might have heard of called MySQL, and this comes built in with Python. So we're gonna say SQLite 3, and then we wanna put database.db, specifying the name of the database file. It can be anything .db. And then we're gonna put a little less than sign, and then we wanna put the schema.sql after that, okay? And by the way, guys, if you haven't used autocomplete before in the terminal, when you start typing the name of a file and click tab, it will go ahead and it will create the rest of that file name for you. So we get, that's what I'm doing there to quickly generate that. So we say SQLite3, database.db, less than sign, schema.sql, and click enter. So now when we click LS to see the files here, we see that there is a database.db file. All right. So now we have, we created our schema. We created our database. Now we need to create the server, which is going to handle the interactions with the database. So to give you guys just a general overview of what the structure of a full stack application looks like, you have your front end, which is the view, okay? When you come to any website you see on the internet, you are seeing the front end of a website that is the view and the information that is being displayed on that most often comes from a database. So what is going on in between there? That would be the server. So we have the view and the server receives requests for information from the user, which comes from the view, right? So the user comes to the view, from there they're able to make certain requests to the server for information they wanna see, then the server goes, grabs that information out of the database, pulls it back and then sends it to the user which is viewing everything. So you can think of it in three parts. We have the view, we have the server, and we have the database, right? And the server is gonna interact, is going to be the intermediary in between there, pulling information from the database, making the changes that we want to make before we send it back to the, to the user who is viewing it, and then sends that information back to the front end to where the user is viewing it, okay? So right now we've created that final part, that's the, that's the database. So now let's go ahead here and create that intermediary part, which is going to be the server. So let's go ahead here and say, uh, we're going to open up the server and that is going to be app.py. Okay, so now what we're doing here is we're going and we are opening up this file here. This is going to be our server file. Okay, and generally speaking, you can name that app.py. That is sort of a, um, a good practice. Okay, so let's go ahead here now and install the packages. Actually, let's go again a little ahead of ourselves here. So let's install the packages. So we're going to say pip install. Um, pip install flask, right? So that will oh. Oh, we already installed that. Okay, so that's gonna bring down that package for us. That's again how we're gonna make our web framework. I'm gonna move over out of the terminal for you guys and we're gonna open up um, and grab net, okay? So this is, this is our file right here. And again, we have our app.py file, which is going to be where we are going to add the information for our server, okay? So the first thing that we are going to do here is we're going to import Flask. So we wanna say, uh, from Flask, import Flask. Uh, let me go ahead and move myself down here. 
import flask uh, render template this is going to be for displaying the html that we want to display on the screen then we're going to say also um Let's see, what else do we need here? Flask, render template, oh, we need request in order to grab the information that is going to be the content and the name of the user off the request that's coming in. And then we see, uh, let's see here, Flask, render template, request. Um, what else are we gonna need? We are going to need um, ba -ba -ba, redirect. No, I think we're good. I think that might be enough. Okay. So now we want to go here, go ahead here, and we're going to say, um, we want to create our actual server object. So we're going to say app equals flask, and then we go ahead and we pass name as the parameter here, okay? So that is going to create our server object, and it's called app. So now that we have that, we want to create the routes, okay? So when you have a server, you have different routes that you can hit. These are known as endpoints, routes, basically synonymous, but essentially what they do are they are unique endpoints which tell the server, which the server uses to decide what data to send back to the to the view half, right? To the user, the view part of our full stack application. So in this case, say we wanted to log in a user, we would often hit a, an endpoint called something like login, and then that would run the necessary code on the server looking for the necessary information that was sent to the server in order to log in the user. So in our case here, we just want to be able to see a home page and then be able to create posts and see the posts that have been created. So let's go ahead here and let's say um, at app.route and we're just going to do a backslash. So this is just going to be the very home page of our uh, application once we start it up, which we will do here in just a second. So we're going to say at app.route with just the backslash. This could be anything like backslash home backslash login, backslash whatever you guys want to put. You can specify whatever name. That's just going to be your endpoint you have to send the request to in order to receive that response back from the server. So now we're going to say, um, we want to say methods, right? So when you are sending information, whether you're sending information or um, any kind of information on the internet, we use things called uh, methods. So in this case, uh, the methods are going to be or include post, put, delete, and there's a few other ones as well. Uh, get is, is obviously the most common one. So when you make a request to see any web page on the internet, that's a get request. You're saying, I want to get this information and they send it back. Generally, that is going to be the web page, the initial web page, okay? Beside that, we have post, which is saying, here's some information, store it in the database. Uh, put, which is saying, here's some information, you probably already have this in the database, update what you have, okay? And then finally, delete is, here's some uh, information about what we want you to remove from your database, okay? Now, all of these methods, these put, post, uh, delete, um, and get these are all known as this is what's known as crud but as another acronym you may have heard of but essentially these are again how you send the data from the um, from the front end and these are all user actions so these all these are just acronyms for user actions okay so let's go ahead here and say there's two methods that are allowed for this endpoint uh, that is just going to show our our page with the posts and be able to take in information so we're going to say the methods are get in order to get the page and post okay so when the post is for submitting all right, so now that we've got our, our app.route here, we're gonna create a function that's going to execute when we hit this endpoint. So we're gonna say def index. We're just gonna call this function index. And then we're gonna say, uh, then we wanna say if request.method equals get then in this case, we're just gonna pass, okay? Because if it's a get request, we're gonna go ahead and return um, the template that we want our user to see, right? Because they're requesting to see the web page. So we're gonna say return render template, and we're, we're gonna create this in just a second. But for now, it's gonna be called index.html, okay? We're going to create that HTML file that our user will see when they send an initial get request to our server uh, in just a second here. So if request.method equals get, we want to pass. Now otherwise here, if request.method equals post, 
then we want to go ahead here and we want to grab the content. So if it's a post request, we are making the assumption that our user has already come to our page and they are now posting information to our uh, web page via some input fields that they see on their end. Okay, so we want to say uh, request dot form dot get and we're going to name our inputs in just a second, but we're going to call them name. And we're going to say request.form.get. And then we're going to call the other one uh, name and we'll say post. Okay. Just for this is going to be the value of whatever our user is the actual information, the, uh, the text that our user is posting. Uh, this is different from this post. Okay. This is the method it itself. And then this is just a variable that's going to be part of that uh, data that we receive that is going to contain the text. Okay. So we're going to have a name name equals that and post equals this and then we're going to go ahead here and now we're going to create um that post and store it in our database okay so we're going to call a method called create post and we're going to pass in name and post okay so now let's go ahead here and actually create the file that's going to interact with our database okay so we need we created our database and right now we're starting to create our server which is going to handle requests but now we need a way for our server to interact with our database and we're going to create a thin layer that uh, of functions that our server is going to use to add things to the database or remove things from the database okay so let's go ahead here and create that file now and we're going to call that file models.py okay so in this file we're going to say import sql light 3 okay and then we're going to go ahead here and do some do some path uh some pathing so essentially guys when we get to this um uh, when we get to this file here when we get to this file here, this is going to be the thin layer that is going to uh, contain that information that is going to allow our server to interact with the database here. And in this case, we want to directly know where our database file is so we can open that up and interact with that. So we're gonna say root equals path dot name and we're gonna say path dot rel path file. So again, essentially, this is saying get the directory name and then get the direct path to whatever file we pass in as the file for this. OK, so we're going to say so we're going to use that in just a second. You guys will see how that ties in nicely. But we're going to go ahead here now and say uh, create a, a function that's going to create a post. OK, so when that request comes in, it's going to call this function with those with the uh, with the name and the post data from that request and then it's going to insert that into the database so let's go ahead and say def create post and remember it's going to receive two parameters that is name and content okay and now we want to go ahead and create a uh, connection to our database so we're going to say con equals sql dot connect and then we want to say path dot join root and then the name of our database file, so database.db. Okay, so now we've made a connection to our database. Now we're going to uh, define a, a thing called a cursor. So essentially, guys, in order to efficiently pull data or not, not pull data, but traverse the database and find the information that we need, we're going to use a thing called cursor. And what the cursor does is instead of grabbing the whole database, it just goes to what we need and makes it much more efficient for us. Okay. So we're going to say cur equals con dot cursor. Okay. So that's going to say, this is the, uh, this is the, the variable that represents the instrument or object that is going to move over our database and find the information we need. So now we're going to say cur dot execute. So this is going to execute raw uh, SQL syntax for inserting a post into the database. So we're going to say insert into posts, which is our table name and content. So insert into the name and content uh, columns. Or let's roll back. Insert a row into the name and content columns that is going to contain this data that was passed as a parameter. Okay. So we're going to say insert into name content values uh, question mark question mark. And then we want to go ahead here and fill in those values what those are going to be so in this case that is going to be name and content all right so that will execute that sql statement 
after making a connection to our database, inserting in the name of the person who posted and the content of the post. Next up here, we're gonna say uh, con.commit and con.close. So that's going to commit that entry to the database, finalizing it, kind of writing it in stone, and then close the uh, connection to the database. Now we wanna create one more method in this file as well, which is get posts. So we wanna say def get posts, and that's going to be um, that's actually not going to take any parameters. That's just going to pull all the posts that we want out of the database so we can display them on the HTML template that we allow our user to see. So we're going to say def get posts and we're going to say con equals sql.connect path.join uh, root and database.db just like above there. And then we say cur equals con.cursor. And then we want to execute uh, a little bit different SQL this time. So we're going to say uh, cur.execute select all, which is represented by this little star, all from uh, posts, which is the name of our table. So that's going to pull all the entries out of our table. And then we want to go ahead here and say um, posts equals cur.fetch all. So that will go ahead and store all those uh, entries into our database that we pulled out with that last SQL statement and store them in the post variable. Then we wanna go ahead and return posts, okay? All right, so that will go ahead and do that. That will grab all our posts for us. So now we have that file. We're able to interact now with our database with that thin layer. We have our database written, <coughs> written and now we wanna finish out our server here. So let's go ahead and uh, check this out here. And now we're gonna go ahead here and create a few final elements, okay? So this is going to be, we have our create post, and now we wanna go ahead here and just say posts equals get posts, right? So that is gonna go ahead and grab all of the posts using that method we just created in our models.py file here, grab all the posts out of the database and return them so that we can display them on the screen. So we have posts equals get posts, and then we wanna go ahead and return, uh, well we have our render template right there, and then we're gonna pass a another parameter and we're gonna call it posts equals posts. So what this is doing here, when we create our template, which is what our user is going to see initially, and then every time they submit a post, we re-render that template, updating it to reflect any new posts. So in this case, we are creating a variable called posts, and we are passing in posts. So when that template wants to access what those posts are, it can do so by referencing this variable that we are passing into it right here. You can think of that more or less as a variable. Okay, so we've got that. Um, yeah, so that looks pretty good. That should be just about everything that we need here. Uh, oh, something else that we do want to do here is say from flask cores import cores. Okay, so this is not always necessary, but this these are security precautions that are going to allow um, our server to run properly here. Uh, so essentially, we are gonna install this package in just a minute, but these are just security precautions to prevent certain things like uh, cross-site scripting, which could say, um, essentially, that influences our SQL could pretend, well, okay, there's a couple different things that can happen there. One, we could, someone could inject new SQL code into our application to see every all the contents of our database, and we don't want that to happen. So that can help do things, again, uh, protect against that. And also cross-site scripting. In this case, we're not using um, any JavaScript specifically, so they can't like insert JavaScript into our code and kind of cheat it in. But there's other ways that you can cheat in other code um, and essentially execute certain things when users are trying trying to do something else. Um, and generally those certain things would be devious things. So we're going to go ahead and close, close this out now. Okay. All right, so that's what we've got. Now guys, let's check it out. Oh, uh, yeah, we don't need to close it actually. So let's check out what we've got. We've got our server. We have our models.py file, which is the thin layer on top of the database to interact with the database. We have our database file. Um, and then we have our schema that we wrote to generate our database, okay? So now the final thing we have to do is create the HTML template that users are going to see when they initially come to the website, okay? So let's go ahead now and create that. Um, 
Oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that now. So this file is going to be, uh, well first, we're gonna store it in a directory. Flask always looks in a directory called templates for your templates to display to the user. So we're gonna create a directory called templates in order to allow Flask to find that. And then inside this directory, we're gonna create a file called index.html. Okay, now what this is going to do here is uh, we are going to be able to display this to the user and the user is then going to be able to see this HTML uh, and this is where we're gonna show the posts and allow the user to submit new posts. So we're gonna say uh, doc type. Doc type is HTML and then we wanna say HTML and then we want to put the body of our text. So again, guys, these are just regular old HTML tags here. And in the body here, we're going to create a form, and we're going to say <clears throat> we're going to say form, and then action equals uh, backslash here in between quotes. That means it will send whatever method we specify after we submit this form to that endpoint. And in that case, that is this endpoint right here. And now we want to say what request. So in this case, guys, we defined it so that. If it's a post method, then we go ahead and we uh, create these, pull this information, and then we create the post, right? We want that to happen. So we're gonna say uh, method equals post, and then we wanna go ahead here and put that information in our form, okay? So let's go ahead and say, um, in here, let's put uh, input with a placeholder to let the user know what to put in there, and that's going to be name. And then we're gonna say, um, after that, we're gonna go ahead here and say name equals uh, name. Okay, so this name field is going to specify what the name, what, so right here, remember we're looking for name, request.form.get.getName. These values right here that we're pulling are specified in our form by this name field right here, okay? So we've got that input. Now we wanna create another input, um, and this input is going to be um, the content of the post. So we're gonna say placeholder input, placeholder equals, equals, uh, well, post content. And then we're gonna say name equals post. Okay, now finally we have a final input, uh, which is going to be our submit button. So we're gonna say uh, input type equals submit, value equals submit, all right, and then that will complete our form. So right here, this is the uh, form that is going to be able to submit new posts to our application. Now, we are going to go ahead here and create our, um, now we wanna create our way to show the messages that are in our posts, right? So remember, we are passing this right here, post equals post. We wanna be able to see all the posts that are pulled out of the database every time we render this template, right? Because we wanna see an updated view, including all the posts that have been recently submitted every time that we see this template. So let's go ahead here and, and do that now. So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say, let's see. We're gonna first create uh, some special syntax here for, for uh, rendering this, this Python, right? So this is why this is a special template. This is unique to Python uh, te templating for HTML, specific with Flask. So we're gonna say uh, for post in posts. So essentially we can write raw Python in our HTML template in order to render things. This is pretty cool guys, so check this out. Uh, we say for post in posts, then we wanna return a div, and we're gonna say in that div, we're just gonna have a post, post one plus a um, colon and post two, okay? So remember, in our database field here, in our schema, we have our ID, we have our text, and we have our content, okay? So in this case here, when we get all these posts out of the database, it is returning a set for us, which is going to have those three values. So again, the first one will be the ID at the zero index, second one will be the name at the first index, and third one will be the content at the second index. So we wanna go ahead and reference that in our index.html file here with that. And now these two squiggly backers right here just mean we are, uh, we are writing Python, okay? So anytime you're doing like loops or if statements, you're gonna go ahead and use this. And then anytime you're rendering actual Python onto the screen, you're gonna do that with these two, uh, two squ consecutive squiggly brackets with the information between. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and close out that div. And now we can go ahead here and we will need to end this for statement. So again, this is specific to um, Flask and Python, generally speaking, Python templating uh, for HTML. So we want to go ahead and end that loop with the end for here. And now that should just about do it for this here. So let's go ahead here and save this template. And now we know that we're going to see that template uh, when we when we get this here, because remember we have return render template index.html. It looks inside the templates folder, finds that index.html, pass in this posts. Now in that index.html, we have the form for submitting new posts, which when you submit it, sends a new post request to this endpoint with that information, which is pulled off. A new post is created, and then, oops. A new post is created, and then we have, uh, we grab all the posts and return the template again. And then in that template, we go ahead and we loop over all those posts, displaying the name of the person who posted, the content of their post, and then we end that loop, and then we end the, that's the end of that template, okay? So now in order to get our server to run and have anything up and going here, we're gonna say um, if name equals main app.run, and we're gonna say debug equals true. Okay, so what this is doing is saying if this is the file that is running, so this if not if name equals main con, uh, syntax is basically saying um, if this is fi if this file is the actual file that was selected to run, then go ahead and and execute this. Otherwise, if it's just a library, then don't execute that uh, whatever is in that within that if statement block. Okay, so now we've got that app that run db equals, equals true. So let's go ahead here and now we're going to see where the errors are because I'm assuming there's there's errors. There are almost always errors. So let's go ahead here and see what we've got. So let's go ahead and activate our virtual environment that has our Python packages. So we're going to say source my env bin activate. Uh, virtual environment is activated. All right. So now we are referencing our, our packages that we specifically ins installed for this application. Now we're going to say uh, pip install flask cores. All right, so that will grab that. Um, all right, so we've got Flask cores now. I don't think we need any other packages. I think those are the only two we used. Yep. Okay, so that looks good there. So now let's go ahead here and try our running our uh, server. So Python app.py, no module named Flask. All right, pip install Flask. Okay, so let's try again. Python app.py. Um, okay, so it looks like for some reason we are not referring to our uh, virtual environment here when we tried to install that package. Let's try again here. We'll say source my env bin activate pip install flask. Let's see here. Python app.py. Hmm. Okay, um, let's see here. So we're going to try, we're going to try this out. We're going to say, um, we're going to say source my env bin activate. And then we're going to say which pip. Okay, so it looks like we're using pi, uh, the 3.6. We're going to say pip3 install, install flask. And we're going to try python3 app.py okay there we go so now our server is up and running here let's go ahead and check that out so we're going to go ahead and put in 127 uh looks like that 127.0.0.1 at port 5000 now we are seeing that specified uh right here oh it looks like we have an error okay so get post, get post is not defined. Okay, so we need to import that from our models file here. So let's go ahead and say from models import uh, create post get posts. Try again. Let me move myself out of the way. Um, and let's see here, invalid syntax, import SQLite 3. It looks like we uh, accidentally removed that I. Put that in there. Path is not defined. Um, okay, from OS import path. 
Try again. There we go. Okay, so now we are up and running here. So now let's go ahead here and check this out. Get post is not defined again here. So let's see what the error is. Um, get post is not defined. We have our function right here. We are importing it. Get posts. And then we are executing it there. Hmm. Get myself out of the way here. See is something not saved correctly. Def get post spelling is correct. Hmm. Okay, guys, hang with me. We're going to figure this out. Okay, there we go. So it looks like something wasn't saved correctly. Now we have name SQL is not defined at SQL.connect. Okay. I was wondering how I had so we're gonna say import SQLite. 3 as SQL. I don't use uh, SQLite very often, so that's my excuse for not knowing that syntax. Um, okay, so let's go ahead here and say Python 3 app.py. There we go. And now we can pull this up here. Another error. SQLite connection object has no attribute QSER. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. That's what it should be. All right, uh, we don't need that. Okay. Now we'll try again. Expect token end of print statement got post. Okay, so that is in our template. So we're getting very close here, guys. Um, let's go ahead to our... Ah, we need this other plus right here. Oh, boy. Okay. There we go. And we try again. There we go. Okay, so now we have our screen here. Let's go ahead and uh, put in an entry and see what happens. So I'm going to say name equals John. Post content is hello. Submit. And again, we have a typo in our models file. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right. And we try again. And there we go. So John says hello. Now we can go ahead and here and put um, John. Uh, goodbye. There we go. And our post shows up. So now we can go ahead and close this out, shut down our whole application here, and start it up again. And we will see those posts are still there because it is pulling from our database file. There we go. There are posts. There's our name, our content, and there we go. Again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, would be great. Uh, please do subscribe if you guys just got here. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great night.